another LED floodlight to take to bits, and this one was given to me to take a look at by Vince Vaughn because he's such a queen for his uh, high power LED stuff. And uh, this is uh, really impressive. It's a very expensive LED floodlight. It's quite curvaceous. I mean, it's actually quite hard to fit under here at the moment. It's made by a company called ScanGrip Lighting and it's supposedly 20 watts, but this thing is just incredibly bright. It's rechargeable. It's got the standard sort of charging port. Well, this is a standard charging port. Let's take a look at the charging port and see what it looks like inside. Oh, it's, oh, it's, uh, it's actually got a different charging port from the usual. It's got a keyed two-pin connector with a proper waterproof cover. And this thing looks as though it's been really well engineered. So um, let's uh, take the back off and take a look inside, shall we? Uh, oh, I should actually show you it lit. Uh, people complain that if I don't show it lit, so it doesn't look mega bright. But trust me, this in a room is just so incredibly bright. Uh, despite the fact it's 20 watt, it really looks a lot brighter and it's got two intensity settings. So let's pop the back off and take a look and see what's inside, electronically speaking. So, it does seem to have good waterproof seals all around it. And the case is quite heavy. It's notable that, that it uses a very different LED from the standard LED uh, rechargeable work lights. Uh, in the sense that it looks like a cob LED in the front, but it's got a lot of chips. Uh, a, a quick count showed it's got 48 chips in the front. Not sure how they're connected. It might be a standard 12 volt cob. I shall do some tests later on and we'll see what's inside it. What it's actually run them at. So inside... Uh, is that a good... Yeah, that is quite a heavily waterproof button. Um, inside is a boost converter. And the number in that chip, it's an XL Semi, XL6006, which is a, is that configurable as a booster buck converter? It's designed for driving LEDs. The battery pack is loose in here. Apparently you can buy replacement battery packs. Well, let's get this out. Let's take it out. Uh, where is my other screwdriver? So let's carefully ease this out without shorting anything out because that could get quite dramatic quite quickly. And I'm not sure Vince would be too thrilled if I burst his light. Although he's already been on uh, online looking up and apparently they do much brighter ones and now he's got his eye on one of those. So let's, uh, let's undo these connectors for a start before I short something. So there's the battery connector I'll just note because I noticed there are two two pin connectors guessing that one goes to the LED. Oh, it does say LED, so that one is going to the LED. So, there's the uh, inductor next to the bush chip, which would make sense. The power supply input, only two wires are connected, but it says DC minus ground and DC plus. I wonder what the ground connection does. Um... Okay, and it changes the intensity, so over here there's going to be a sense resistor. There's possibly two sense resistors, with one of them being bridged out the transistor, with, uh, with its base being pulled to ground, I'm guessing. Negative? Yes, negative. I think, is that, is that actually pulled to negative? Hard to see, I shall investigate that. Uh, and then the input to that is coming from this switch, which looks like a standard multi-position switch. Okay, I'm going to have to investigate that as well. It's quite an interesting approach to it. The battery, which seems to be loose. Um, now, I was told that uh, when it gets to the bottom, uh, you know, when the battery is fully discharged, it goes off suddenly. So this must have protection, which I'd normally expect this would. It's a 12-volt configuration, which means it's going to be three pairs of cells, each pair of cells connected in parallel. There's a big bulge here, but there's not any bulges elsewhere, so I wonder if that's where the protective circuitry is. I can see a green circuit board under here, so there's a protection circuit board. This is where normally I'd be ripping this open with tape, but Vince uh, wants this back intact, so uh, yeah, I'm not going to be ripping it apart with, uh, with t uh, knives and things like that, because it has to go, you know, back to its rightful owner and he wants it back intact. Uh, this is the LED lead. Uh, going out to, there's the two screws that must hold the LED in. 
Uh, and yeah, we'll take a look at the other side as well then. So let's uh, actually let's turn it over and take a look right now. The, all the screws seem to be the same sort of uh, screwdriver size, which is good. And this uh, aluminium bezel seems to be holding nice. everything in. Hi. Uh, good. That's quite awesome. snugly. Oh. It's unusual to see a cob LED in this uh, unit. In this style, it's you know so many of the other ones I've seen this a square LED, this a ten wattish one or the twenty watt one with the rows of chips, but it seems to be an array of forty eight chips in here. Mm. Yep. And uh, let's uh, get this off, and hopefully this will reveal lots of interesting stuff without me having to go too far here. Right, is this going to come out? Nicely machined piece of aluminium. Oh, there's a seal. So, is that a glass lens? I think that's a glass lens, that's good. Um, what's this metal thing here? Is this just a reflector? Uh, I could do something to actually prise that out with another screwdriver. Do I have anything? Ah. I've got a test lead I can do that with. Let's hoik that up. Oh, it's stuck down. Oh, this is where it's all going to go horribly wrong and then Vince is going to just never forgive me for bursting his light. Oh, it's two bits of double-sided tape. Okay, I'll make sure I don't get greasy fingerprints in that. Ah, uh, the cob. A uh, square circuit board, round array with that number. Uh, I'm going to have to do a wee electrical test on this. Uh, I'm going to have to put it together to do that test. Okay, uh, I shall put it together and I'm going to flash that up and actually measure the voltage across this and explore the circuitry a little bit more and uh, we'll see what it's like. So that's it back together again, and I'm surprised at how high the voltage is. If I, let's see, can you see that meter okay? It's, it's going to be swamped out by the ceiling. Is it? Right, I'll just have to read what, what I'm seeing here. If I turn the, the light on uh, at its low setting, the voltage across the LEDs is 34.7 volts, which is quite high. And if I turn it up to the higher setting, the voltage then increases to approximately 37 volts and if you kind of do the math, so it's 48 chips and it's roughly 3 volts a chip. That means the chips are probably wired as four circuits of 12, I'd guess. Because the 12 uh, in series would give approximately, uh, at 3 volts, that would give about 36 volts. And that's uh, probably what it is. And if you consider this as a 20 watt light, the LEDs then, the four circuits, are probably being run in the region of 150 milliamps. Um, so, yeah, they're not being pushed too hard, and certainly the, the fins in this heatsink are enormous, they're actually going to take a lot of the heat away. Uh, the circuitry is just, it's so simple, the switch has uh, uh, three positions, off, on and on, with an extra pin uh, when it's actually obviously rotating inside around the contacts. Simply turning on this transistor here, which shunts one of the uh, regulator's um, sense resistors, and therefore boosts the, the current up, so that will be the second setting, the higher intensity one. But it's all very straightforward. It's, quite, it's one of the best I've seen in terms of the actual use of proper regulators and nice chunky battery packs, and there's um, plenty holding it all in place inside. It, it just seems quite snug. So, yeah, that's quite a nice light. It's quite a nice light indeed. It's very stylish with its huge, heavy, curved front. Um, and the, that's a very focused reflector. I have to say, I thought I burst Vince's light momentarily because I was clicking it and I wasn't seeing it lit. And the reason was simply because um, it, no light spills out from underneath when there's ambient light because it's so, such a focused beam forward. So um, that's, that's quite nice. nice uh, I quite like that. It's quite a neat little light.